ready. And they're off. Racing seven furlongs in the Group 3 Whispering Angel Oak Tree Stakes. Matilda Picard has broken well from stall number 16 and just about leads after the end of the opening furlong. From International Angel in Glen Laurel, then Sydney Arms Chelsea deeper out in light blue and red. More towards the inside, the white and black with a nose band is fast response. Juliet Sierra is behind those. Together with white moonlight towards the inside of Juliet Sierra is Breeze. Then more back towards the inside and slightly hampered on the bend there is American Kestrel in that red jacket. Magical Sunset on terms with her at that point and then Dream of Love. Further back then to Sicilian Defence and Samedi Rien is the bat marker. They're racing through halfway. Matilde Picot and Ronan Whelan lead the field in the Whispering Angel Oak Tree Stakes. But only narrowly, though, from Sydney Arms, Chelsea in the light blue and red silks. International Angel is close up behind. And then came Glen Laurel in the yellow jacket. Juliet Sierra trying to start that run on the inside. But as they head down towards the final quarter mile, Matilde Picot's been headed by International Angel. Glen Laurel in the yellow silks. Then Matilde Picot back in third trying to battle away. Breeze is next in fourth. Juliet Sierra has lost her position. Now fast response is well beaten. They're heading down towards the final furlong. International Angel leads the way now from Glen Laurel. Breeze coming up with something in the centre. Matilde Picot and now Magical Sunset bearing down on them towards the near side. Magical Sunset's coming home strongly. Joins in now with Breeze. Behind those Glen Laurel as they head for the line. The Oak Tree Stakes goes away. Magical Sunset from Breeze home in second. Then came Dream of Love in third. Glen Laurel next in fourth in front of Juliet Sierra Sydney Arms Chelsea and White Moonlight success for Magical Sunset and Richard Hannon trains the winner of the Oak Tree Stakes for Ammo Racing second is Breeze the Sandringham runner up an errant passage late as she drifted down toward Magical Sunset third was nine Dream of Love Glen Laurel was fourth and back in fifth, a slightly better run from Juliet Sierra. But Richard Hannon, who was on the score sheet yesterday with Hartem in the vintage stakes and has Bahir in the Molcombe later, has won this with Magical Sunset, who has bounced back to her early season form in the hands of Kevin Stott, who got on this when Olivia Meralda was withdrawn shortly before this race was run, replacing David Egan, Kevin Stott. And she wins, and she's won ultimately with a decisive run toward the stands rail and track positioning might have been crucial here Martin. Yeah, stall 14 she's come out of so as we were touching on before when the ground gets very testing here or softer and they come across centre to stand side that draw isn't as important and as impactful as it uh, is on the on the normal racing line towards the far side certainly the higher numbers are not as disadvantaged if anything it perhaps favours them to some extent um, and she's had that trip wide down the back but she's able to get that stand side position and come with a strong run she's a filly that won on very soft ground last season at Newbury so she had proven her effectiveness under these conditions in the past and um, you know she's had some tough asks so far this year this was another one in theory but things just worked out for her played out for her probably better than one or two others Breeze made her challenge more towards the center of the track she's run really well hasn't she but uh, magical sunset closer to the stands rail just had a little bit more um, of a finishing kick through the final hundred yards she was stopped in a run actually the winner wasn't she briefly there at the two going towards the two furlong pole uh, Breeze, the runner-up, is getting better and better with every start this season. It's a big order in the Irish Guineas on her seasonal debut. Great run in the Sandry, a bit unlucky to run into one there. And you feel that she's been a bit unfortunate today to be out there in the middle of the track whilst Magical Sunset's burrowed her way up the stand side rail. That said, Magical Sunset was chopped in her run before her run started, she, being she, run started. Yeah, she was. She was trying to get rolling a little bit sooner and about two and a half furlongs out she was just blocked a little bit and had to wait 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 behind horses but thankfully it opened up there were plenty of them tiring behind and if things opened up nicely uh, for her to get get out in time uh, Breeze's maneuver didn't do international angel any favors you can just see Breeze is fourth from the left of shot the uh, lilac cap the green body right hand drive Jason Hart and just as he begins to gather her up again she veers quite sharply down away from the stick into uh, International Angel. Well, I think he's, yeah. Yeah, she's really, what she's wandering all over the place, isn't she, really, late on, but that was a significant shift to the left. And it's gone down uh, narrowly in the end to Magical Sunset. Glenn Laurel's run well really in the well. end. Really well, really uh, well. Juliet Sierra, much, much better from her today in fifth. Yes. Yeah, she's, uh, she's done enough to probably persevere with her over seven furlongs, hasn't she, anyway?
but more big race success for Kevin Stott, the man who rode King of Steel to an excellent third place finish in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth at Ascot the other day, the man who rode three winners in a day at the July Festival and who has had a, a high old time of things in the silks this season. All smiles, Kevin Stott, as he returns aboard Magical Sunset. It is a good, glorious Goodwood for Richard Hannon once again with Bahia, the horse that one shrewd observer described to me as a complete monster to come in the Malcolm Stakes. Certainly be buoyed by that win. Magical Sunset's returned at this price in the oak tree. 18 to 1 shot, Nick. Lands the oak tree, daughter of Kodiak for Richard Hannon Ammo Racing. And Kevin Stott, well done. To that team. I think being close to the stands rail was important. Oh, absolutely. I really do absolutely. think getting as close to that stands rail as possible is the, is the way to go. Breeze was in second place. A little bit more out towards the middle. 18 to 1. The winner, Breeze, was 4 to 1 joint. Favourite Dream of Love was 15 to 2 in third place. Time, 133.18. Well, it's 8.88 .88 outside standard. Commensurate, of course, with uh, heavy ground. I think Dave here in the studio is kicking himself, aren't you? Oh, I thought it was one of the only horses at prices who was proven on uh, on soft ground. I thought she'd run well. She usually does run well. Mm. Um, she's not in the picture here, but when we switch to the head-on, you can see that she's uh, getting blocks in a run. Kevin starts switching all over the place and um, burrows up the favoured stands rail. Here she comes. And she's won, uh, she's won decisively in the end. Um, Breeze, uh, I feel a little bit sorry for, but the one that uh, was probably most hindered by being out on its own in the middle of the track was Dream of Love. I think that one can be upped in, uh, upped in performance. Yeah, Dream of Love, the, the Shaman Alphilly for uh, Charlie Appleby. Richard Hannon, though, was the winning trainer. Here he is. Second winner of the Qatar Goodwood Festival for Richard Hannon, following his uh, success in the vintage stakes yesterday. Now Magical Sunset has won the Group 3 Oak Tree Stakes. Many congratulations, and I think the weather has allowed what seemed to be a bad draw to turn into a good draw. Yeah, I think she would have been unlucky if she'd have got beaten, but she's much better on this ground. She won the, the uh, listed race at Newbury, uh, the Radley Stakes, very well in this ground, and that's helped her today. Yeah, it brings about 10, 15 pounds worth of improvement. She looked to me the last day like she was travelling the best of sand on her list of race, and she looked like she didn't get home, so came back to seven today and delighted. She's won very well. The owner rang me and was actually pleased, so that's like rarer than I don't know what. This is a interruption, you were yeah, very rare occasion. <laughs> and he rang me and said, well, you've had a winner for ammo, and <laughs> so don't worry, I'll get him back. <laughs> Well, congratulations. That's, that's, that's good work already today. Yeah, exactly. I'm delighted with that. You know, any group race is very, very hard to win. And my God, there's a massive ball of whispering the angel over there. Yeah, well, she he, must be looking forward to that. Well, he's not getting that. Right, okay. That's what you call tax. <laughs> well, you have to be here to get it, exactly, don't you? Yeah, you know? and the prize money, apparently. <laughs> so delighted with her. She's a really sweet filly, and she's always been a pretty good filly, and, but she is much better on that ground. And she cost a few quid, mind you, and she was unlucky in the Goss Million. So she's getting revenge slowly and getting her slice of, slice of luck. Where might you go with her now? Wherever the soft ground is, really. She's, I think I put her in a Group 3 in Deauville um, in about three weeks' time. So she might go there. With um, penalty, obviously, now. Nice penalty to have. Though. Exactly, I agree with that, yeah. But uh, here in the uh, Malcolm coming up next, can you win three Malcolms in a row? I'd love to think so, but this lad is as likely to run that way as he is that way. Right. He's he's a tricky customer. We cut him. My God, he's a good horse. Whether he goes on this ground or not, I don't know. But obviously, the meeting is sponsored by by Qatar, and Sheikh Duan is here, so he's running for his life. And if he doesn't handle the ground, he doesn't. But He's, he's quite frightening sometimes with, with the way he works. He doesn't always run like that, but I'm hoping he'll put his best foot forward. So this is a horse of large talent that just oh, needs huge. channeling. Huge, yeah, but I mean, he's just as wayward as he is talented. Okay, well, Don't look at me and say like me. It's not... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just only thinking it, only thinking it. Yeah, Con congratulations. Thanks, Lydia. <laughs> Winning horse is a golf's horse. Let's have a look at the blurry head-on. And uh, 
Dave mentioned that the international angel might have just got a squeezed out a little bit. I think she was stage. weakening. She was getting tired, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. Um, but 